guys, welcome back. Uh, so today I am writing the recipe to make a India Pale Lager tomorrow. Um, so I just kind of decided to make this mainly because I had some San Francisco lager yeast in my refrigerator that I needed to use. And, you know, summer drinking lagers, they go hand in hand. So, yeah, I'm hoping this will be done in less than a month so I can actually drink it because we're get, getting through my stout and I uh, haven't racked my uh, NEPA that I made yet, but it'll go quick, I'm sure. So let's check out what an India Pale Lager should be. Um, uh, an example of the a recipe and get our hops and malts figured out. I am uh, opening up Brewfather and we're just going to make a new recipe. So I'm actually going to brew on my claw hammer system tomorrow and do a full electric brew, mainly because it is hot outside. So I'm actually going to brew right here. Uh, I think I have devised a scheme to make it all work. Um, pumps are involved because there's no sink in here. Brewfather doesn't have a claw hammer um, profile, so what I usually use is the Grainfather 110, um, and I just edit it to not make it a six gallon. I make it a five, so it'll actually, actually let's do 5.5. 5.5 um, so that it'll fit in my keg. And we're gonna choose a style. Let's see if IPL comes up. Nope. All right, so we have some uh, things to sort through. Um, okay, so before we set our style, let's go to Beer and Brewing and see how to make our best IPL. Okay, so what I've gathered from the Beer and Brewing article on how to make your best India Pale Lager, um, which I'll link to below, um, basically you want to get kind of one of the lager essence um, to come through. So we're not gonna do a dry hop. I don't like dry hopping anyway. It's something I have to think about after I'm done brewing, so I'm not a fan. Um, so we're not gonna dry hop. We're just going to do, um, I'll do some bittering and then some uh, late edition hops to kind of get the you know IPA uh, tropical hoppiness to come through. Um, I'm going to do a half and half Pilsner and two row. Um, Beer and Brewing suggested Maris Otter and Munich or Maris Otter and Pilsner or Munich and Pilsner. Um, so do with that what you will. Uh, I, you know, I don't think I'm going to do any additional malts other than that. It's going to be super, super clean malt bill. Um, just really simple. I love simple. One of the main things I want to do with this beer is get rid of some of my freezer hops. So I am running out of freezer space and I just got an Instapot. So I'm like super about meal prep right now. So I need to clear out some space and I should probably just get another refrigerator, but I don't think our circuits will work. If you notice the light changing, it's because we have brownouts here in Los Angeles. So yeah. All right. So what I have in my freezer for hops is Jarillo or Yarilo, Pico, Simcoe, Amarillo, and Azaka. Um, so I think I want to use Pico. Pico is kind of more of an herbally juniper sage kind of hop uh, recommended to use for bittering. Um, so I think that's a great thing to do with it. Um, these are all whole cone hops. Um, so like this is a lot, but it's, it's not nearly that much. Um, and I have in my brew father inventory, how much I actually have. So, um, going back to the style, I think what style I'm going to put it on is just like American lager or, or something. I don't know. Let's just do American lager. Why not? It's going to be a really light colored beer, so that should do it. Um, I'm going to add my two row. Um, and let's just start with five pounds, and then I'm going to do five pounds of Pilsner. And I don't know, I don't think, I actually have RAR. Actually, I should change these all to what they actually are. RAR Pilsner. And then... 
Raturo. Okay, so that gets us to 4.7%, and I'm going to go ahead and bump my Turo up to 6 pounds just because I'm paranoid. And I'm always afraid that I'm going to get a really low ABV beer with no flavor. Okay, so we've got 11 pounds of malt. Um, I'm going to do RO water. I'm doing no sparge. Obviously, I never do. Um, looks like I might need to add a little lactic in my mash. Um, it's not my default water. I'm going to use RO. Let's see a target profile. American lager. Let's do it. I love a good American lager. I love, like, I'll drink a Budweiser any day. So that gives us our water additions, half a gram of calcium chloride, 1.4 of Epsom and 0.8 of gypsum, so not much. If you're in Brewfather and you want to take out your sparge, you have to do it up at the equipment profile. And how I do it, which may not be correct, Seven, that's what I always add. Max, oh, here. Max barge water, 0.1, is what I always do. That will change this. We're actually gonna use seven gallons of mash water, um, mainly because the screen holds up the malt in this system. Okay, so we've got our grain, our water additions. Now for the hops, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw in my San Francisco lager yeast in here. I'm not gonna even bother making a starter. Uh, maybe I should. This is a little expired. All right, I'm going to make a starter this afternoon then. Um, just like a vitality starter, so it doesn't have to do the whole rigmarole. All right, so White Lab, San Francisco Lager Yeast. Save. That actually knocked our ABV estimation down, which is interesting. Okay, so hops. Pico, so I have five ounces of Pico. Unfortunately, I don't think I can get rid of all of it in one beer, um, but I'm just gonna do that at uh, one ounce at 60. Eh, no. Man, that's 18.6 alpha acids. We're gonna do one ounce at 30. Okay, so nope, we're gonna do less than that. We're gonna do 0.5. Let's see what 0.5 is, nope. Oh, well, you know what? We're going for an IPL, not an actual American lager, so I think we can um, push past these IBU boundaries a little bit. So we're going to stick to the 0.5 at 30. Um, and then, uh, so Yarilo is very sticky. Um, it's kind of banana and spicy. I'm not looking for that. I had too much in that other banana e beer that I made. So what we're going to do is do some Amarillo and Azaka for our actual, like, hoppy flavor. So Amarillo is lemon, orange, grapefruit, florally, citrus um, kind of deal. And then Azaka is tropical, mango, pineapple. So we should get kind of like a very tropical smoothie kind of vibe from these two in collaboration. So... We're gonna do so a lot of late um, late additions to get. Um, I really love a hoppy nose in a IP in an IPL, um, but like I love a clean beer. So we're gonna try to combine those two things um, and just give a ton of hops on the nose, but also have a very clean, clear, crisp lager. This is a Zaka. So, um, so a Zaka whole cone. And we're going to start out with one ounce at five. Actually, let's do two ounces at five. And then Amarillo, we are going to do two ounces at Whirlpool. Sure. I'm literally just making this up as I go. All right, so we got a 45 IBU. So how I actually do my IBUs when I make IPAs is I try to kind of match my, like say I have a 1.053 OG, I'll try to hit around 53 IBUs. Um, that kind of, it seems balanced to me. I've read somewhere that 
you can do that and it works. Uh, don't know where I read it. Uh, it's kind of just ingrained in me at this point. So I think I might bump this up, but again, we have a lower ABV estimated. Um, so maybe I'm just gonna add one ounce of Azaka in the hop stand. Why not? I'm sure it will be lovely. So we've got five minute hop stands at who knows what temperature. Let's do 194. I don't know if that'll change anything. Oh, but I gotta make sure this is the right Amarillo. Oh, I used the wrong Amarillo. So Amarillo, we need to use the whole cone one and not the other. And five minutes. And 194, there's so many options. Okay, so our IBU is now at 54. Um, that's great, so we've got 0.5 of Pico for bittering at 30, two ounces of Azaka at five, two ounces of Amarillo at a five minute hot stand at 194, one ounce of Azaka at the same hop stand. I'm gonna change my fermentation temperature. We're gonna do a 55 degree lager for two weeks. Um, and then we can ramp for say five days. So we're gonna ramp it up to a higher temperature, say like probably 65, um, just to keep uh, clearing out the beer, making it as clean as possible, getting letting the yeast eat all the diacetyl and stuff. And this is not a ale, so I should not even have that. Edit. I don't know why that's, whatever. 55, ramp, five days, save. Okay, so I am brewing this beer tomorrow. I've gotta to go get my water still and um, just kind of prepare. We're doing something a little different tomorrow with the chilling system because I have no water in here. Well, I hope this kind of gave you an insight into how I craft a beer, especially one I've never made before. It's easy. There's no reason to be afraid of making your own recipe. If you do your fermentation like within the bounds of the yeast, so you're not getting too hot, and if you're just generally hitting the numbers you're plugging into your program, whether it be Brewfather or Beersmith, you're most likely gonna come out with an all right beer. It'll at least be drinkable. Um, the only time I've ever made undrinkable beers are infections and like, really, really, really high fermentation temperatures, which can give you crazy off flavors. Um, but yeah, it's easy and you should do it. Um, well, I hope you like this video, like, and subscribe. Please ignore the Berliner Weiss that is happening. That's a different video for a different day. Just wanna let you guys know that we have memberships open for the channel. You can get all the videos early and obviously I'm doing shout outs because I'm about to shout out to our newest member, Valentin Podrisnik. Thank you so much for supporting me. I'm attempting to open a completely independent brewery. No investors, no nada. So every dollar counts. I really appreciate all of you who are supporting and I hope that you can someday drink my beer commercially. I will see you next time.